This is the BYD Shark 6, South Africa's first plug-in hybrid electric bucky. It's built on BYD's DMO super off-road hybrid platform. Let's take a look around. The BYD Shark is 5.5 meters long and 2.7 tons heavy. But that 2.7 tons moves very quickly. 0 to 100 in 5.7 seconds. It's driven by two permanent magnet synchronous motors. One on the front axle, one on the rear axle. 170 kilowatts on the front and 150 kilowatts on the back. And coupled to that is a 1.5 turbo four-cylinder combustion engine. The system generates 320 kilowatts of power and 650 newton meters of torque. From an energy perspective, it has a 59 liter petrol tank and a 29.58 kilowatt hour battery. And combined, the VYD Shark is able to get 670 kilometers of WLTP distance. From a charging perspective, the Shark offers 6.6 .6 kilowatt AC charging or up to 55 kilowatt DC charging. So let's talk about the efficiency of the, of the Shark for a moment. You've got this 29.5 kilowatt hour battery, but the range works between 25% and 100%. So you actually have 75% of that 29 kilowatt hours available, which leaves you with around 22 kilowatt hours. In that 22 kilowatt hours, you can do around 85 kilometers of pure EV range at highway cruising speeds. Now, if you look at the petrol side, that 59 liter petrol tank can do around 585 to 590 kilometers, which gives you a fuel efficiency of just under 10 liters per 100 kilometers. What's pretty neat about the Shark is that you're able to save electric power for when you really want to deploy it. So you have a sliding scale option on the infotainment unit where you can set the target state of charge that you want to maintain. This allows you to really preserve the energy and deploy it on sections of the road where an EV makes sense. For example, going up hills. So when you're doing normal highway cruising, you set the Shark into hybrid electric mode and allow the intelligent energy systems within the vehicle control how energy is deployed between the petrol tank and the battery, giving you the most efficient economy that you can get. So one of the coolest features of the BYD Shark plug-in hybrid is the vehicle to load function or V2L. You can treat this as a, a mobile battery and power appliances from this vehicle when you're camping or when you're, whenever you may need to. So inside this little plug, You'll notice you've got two three uh, prong 16 amp plugs you can put appliances directly into that and this is able to provide up to a maximum of six kilowatts constant energy which is significantly higher considering your house runs at about 800 watts so this could power your house if you ever needed it to and probably last for about 10 hours of constant battery power so let's test the vehicle to load function on the BYD Shark 6. I've just plugged in a standard household kettle directly into the power socket. So powering it on, you can see it's switched on and it should boil like any normal kettle. Looking forward to a cup of coffee. Boiling a kettle by itself isn't that exciting. So let's throw a toaster in at the same time and make a piece of toast. So now I'm running a, two appliances at the same time, both of them drawing about three kilowatts together kettle's still boiling and I can just see that the toasters just come on as well so that looks great and uh, I think this is perfect for a camping setup you know if you're uh, out there without any power your shark is going to power all your camping needs quite straightforward let's make that cup of coffee cheers Yeah, tastes like a shark. There you go. Toaster's just popped out. Definitely hot, definitely crispy, definitely toast. So I think we can say this test is passed. <laughs> Look, everyone has to clean their car every now and then. Um, but what's cool is that you can take your vacuum cleaner everywhere you go and basically just have it plugged into the back of the shark and use the vehicle to load function. 
just arrived here at a DC charge station. This is a 60 kilowatt DC charge station and the shark can charge up to 55 kilowatts. So we're going to do a DC charge test now. Plug in the DC charger. Basically just need to tap your authentication card. Does a handshake with the, the shark now to see what speed they can charge together at. It says charging will start in a few seconds. There we go. You can see charging power is picking up to 29 kilowatts at 61 percent oh we're up to 53 53.6 53.7 so pretty much charging at maximum now we're at 53 kilowatts and that says 35 minutes to charge that up to 100 percent and then we're good to go for another 85 case so i've got the byd shark parked in my garage right now it's connected to my wallbox ev charger which is being powered directly by the solar panels and I just wanted to take you through some of the numbers just to give you a feel for how it's possible to charge from solar at home. This is a typical wall box charger. It's been installed and commissioned by an electrician directly connected to my DB board and to my inverter systems. So I've got two 5.5 kilowatt SunSync inverters. Um, these inverters allow up to 11 kilowatts peak power to come from the solar panels at any given time. So in the middle of the day, this is when we're going to get the maximum uh, power production. Look at the screens, you can see we're at 66% and I've configured to put in 5.1 kilowatts uh, as a speed. And the reason for that is that I want to minimize any draw off the grid and maximize production from solar right now. But if you just have a look at the numbers, this is one half of my production. So solar production right now is at 3.6 on this inverter, which if I double it, it's going to be around 7.2 kilowatts. On the right hand side, the load of the house is also at 3.4. Remember 5.1 of that is coming from the AC requirements to, to charge the, the vehicle. The battery is not providing any input here, so I'm completely bypassing the battery. The battery sits at 100%. But if you look at the grid in the bottom right, you can notice that that's sitting at zero. So this tells me that I'm, being, I'm able to use the surplus production from the solar being produced right now and pump all of that into the BYD shock. To stop the charging session, what you actually have to do is double unlock the doors. And then you'll notice it says charging paused. And once it's paused, what you can do then is effectively just disconnect the cable. I'm sitting inside the shock at the moment, and I have to say, super spacious super luxurious very premium feel to the interior cabin and uh, let me take you through a little bit on the ur of the infotainment unit as well just to get a feel for the technology available in the car firstly just a really comprehensive uh, interior section here some nice grips on the side of the uh, center console but also nice grips on the side of the, uh, the a pillars as well in terms of gripping for for any kind of heavy off-roading but uh, all your main controls here your driving selector quite simple quite straightforward you've got some of your uh, you know um, traction control and hill descent controls there you've got volume controls uh, on the left hand side typically keys go from an nfc perspective and this is a wireless charging mat at 50 watts and you've got some storage consoles for for um, bottles and for drinks and then you've got some shortcut buttons here for hazards for toggling between EV mode and uh, HEV mode, your start-stop button. This toggles the release of the, um, the rear bin holder, and then you've got an auto hold here as well. So some nice, hard, tactile buttons when you need them. The steering wheel itself has got multiple controls on it. All your uh, intelligent cruise control and automatic cruise control buttons on the left. You've got volume control, media controls, and screen uh, panel controls on the right. And you've got two buttons here. You've got one for setting the mode and one for setting the terrain. So if I change the mode, I can cycle between sport, eco, normal. And if I change the terrain, I can cycle between snow, sand, mud, mountain. In itself is, is very, very clear, very high resolution. And of course it has the BYD party trick of switching to portrait mode at the touch of a button if you prefer that. Otherwise, you can just flip it back to, port, uh, to, to landscape mode uh, if you prefer that as well.
of all your sort of controls for air conditioning, um, for menu options, for returning to home, for split screening if you need to, um, as well as getting to application screens, all sort of at the bottom of the screen. And then you've got some shortcuts that appear depending contextually on what you're doing. So you have a Bluetooth connection, you have some car controls locking or dropping the trunk, you've got your media controls, and you've got a shortcut to get to uh, Apple CarPlay if you want to get there quickly. Um, very large implementation, large icon implementation of CarPlay, um, but otherwise very clear and very responsive. Main screen in terms of settings is on the car screen, um, starting with connection. You've got a number of uh, connected uh, connection options, straightforward. Your audio as expected, you've got some uh, sort of sound processing options for your focusing and, uh, you know, theater modes for sound. You've got various options for displays, setting screen savers, adaptive brightness. You've got auto uh, modes for, for dark and light. There's some version control in terms of upgrading system software. So by clicking on ADAS, this is your automatic drive assistance systems. Number of safety sections here in terms of emergency lane keeping, blind spot detection, door opening, intelligent high beam, hill descent. There really is a comprehensive menu here for, for safety systems. Clicking the energy field, you've got some really good control. As I've said, the state of charge in terms of saving it. You can set a various setting for high or low uh, regenerative braking. Um, you can decide how to display the remaining energy in terms of mileage or SOC. So at the moment, you can see on the bottom left there, it says 63%. If I hit the mileage, it'll tell me that that's 44 kilometers. So you can toggle nicely between those two modes. Um, you can also get it to say dynamic, which is based on your previous history of driving or standard, meaning uh, it'll take into account just the WLTP range. So let's leave it on, on dynamic. Charging and discharging, some nice settings for uh, how you want to do for, you do it for smart charging. You can set certain schedules and so on for charging. You can also then look at energy consumption, and this is quite a comprehensive view of what your consumption has been from an electricity perspective, as well as a fuel perspective. And you get a combined uh, value there, which at the moment is showing me 1.4 liters per 100 kilometers or 29.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers with 569 kilometers left on, uh, on fuel mode. So really nice data that is provided by the shock, allowing you to have you know, really good uh, granular control of how you're driving and getting the best out of this new energy vehicle. When you click on the vehicle mode, you get a comprehensive um, set of options for, for your vehicle. Intelligent chassis in terms of some steering and brake assist or some comfort parking, which slows the, the vehicle down without a jerk. Uh, the lighting, comprehensive lighting options, comfort driving, and uh, an interesting feature here around wade protection. So should you have to go under a, a bridge that is waterlogged, you toggle this mode and it'll actually ensure that there's pressure put out the exhaust to prevent any flooding or back flooding coming up into the engine and uh, allowing you to go through through water quite safely so, or, or through a river quite safely. So really nice tech driven uh, off-roading modes. HUD, um, the, the HUD sits just over there uh, and allows you to give, um, you know, get some speed information ahead of you and some other information works quite well. Uh, instrument settings in terms of brightness and how you want certain things changed. So at the moment on the right hand side, I'm showing the odometer. I can switch that to the trip ATV, or I can switch it to the EV mode trip or trip A or trip B. So you've got some control there. By the way, this button on the side uh, does the same thing to switch between those uh, that information. Um, going into air conditioning, same sort of story. You get control around that. You can actually set remote air conditioning. The seats have got ventilation and heating if you want it. Um, locking, quite a few options for locking, um, closing windows with, with the key fob and so on. You can control your notifications. And then there's some interesting, uh, you know, towing modes as well. And finally, on the service side, you know, you can get some information around when you want maintenance and uh, for intervals and mileage to show. So that's up to you in terms of how you'd like to, to control that. You could do some basic maintenance as well, and you can get some uh, fault readings uh, throughout the vehicle. Switching across to the driver's screen, uh, fairly comprehensive. I mean, the main information you really want is your speedometer at the top, which is always there, always visible in the center. 
you've got a fairly well um, you know, calibrated uh, radar section which shows you vehicles around you, recognizes the shape and height of the vehicles. And this is all for the intelligent cruise control. On the left hand side, you can see some dynamic information around your consumption in terms of your kilowatt hours per 100 Ks, your liters per 100 Ks, and you're basically a, a, a number which is your combined uh, consumption. Bottom left is always going to be interesting and important. Your battery state of charge, 63%, and your remaining fuel range, 569. So combined, giving you 612 kilometers remaining in terms of range. On the right hand side, this is a dynamic kilowatt number that changes depending on whether you're braking or accelerating. Um, in the top right there, you can see it's HEV. If I flick it switch, I can switch it to EV mode and ensure that I'm only using the battery if I want to. So you do have that sort of control as well. If I press one button on the left, I can also toggle various views in terms of data and information, uh, liters per kilometer. I can also see fuel consumption, charging capacity in terms of regen, and uh, you can see your tire pressures uh, in, in dynamic terms as well. So I think in summary, just the interior of the vehicle is extremely impressive, um, very high tech. It's exactly what you'd expect from BYD. Um, the screens and the information and the toggling options for the control that you want on the vehicle functionality is, is superb. Uh, the, the silence of the cabin when driving, I've noticed, is incredibly uh, quiet. Um, both from the inside and from the outside, uh, people cannot hear the vehicle driving past them that is that quiet. And if you consider that this is a 2.7 ton bucky, um, you know, gone are the days of a noisy diesel tractor. Um, you don't have to have that anymore. You can drive in, in, in the future, basically, but with, uh, with the sort of ruggedness and the utility that you can get from a, a vehicle like the BYD Shock. Simply incredible. So just wrapping up my experience with the BYD Shark for the past couple of days. It's been a, a super uh, interesting test, amazing uh, draft drain in this vehicle, full of technology as you would expect from BYD, and it's going to be a very compelling competitive proposition in the uh, sort of upper tier Bucky segment. At 960,000 Rand, I think it's offering a very complete package. Um, I was able to get most of the specifications that the car offers out of the vehicle. So certainly the power of 321 kilowatts and torque of 650 newton meters is there. Acceleration is, is, is fantastic. Um, sub six seconds, 0 to 100 is, is easily achievable. I enjoyed the, the drive modes, the ability to switch between eco, between normal, between sport, and you can definitely feel the, the differences there. And more than that was the ability to have the control of EV mode when you need it and hybrid mode when you need it. And specifically being able to protect the charge in the battery to be deployed more on uphills um, rather than just wasting it on flats. So you've got that control when you do a road trip, which is really great. Super smooth driving feeling, um, very premium interior and uh, fantastic uh, charging capabilities. I tested the charging at home and also on AC and also did a DC charge test able to get up to 55 kilowatts. So I hope you enjoyed that brief overview of the BYD Shark 6. I really enjoyed uh, testing the vehicle and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.